An anonymous call just came in. A clown carrying balloons at the skating rink is selling track to teenagers. Is this one real or not? It sounds more real because I have bought crack from a clown before. Used to be when I asked Kendrick to stay late at the office, he liked to grumble and crack wise. Nowadays, he doesn't have the strength for it. Slumped shoulders, blank stare, wrinkled skin. The past few weeks, I don't hardly so sad. recognize my old friend. In his younger years, he reminded me of a gallant royal officer in an old Kipling story. And I don't know who Kipling is. Kendrick isn't just crumbling under the weight of the public pressure, but from the shame of it all. Oh, Internal man. Affairs raided the library he inherited from his grandfather, hoping they'd find buckets of cash stashed in the pages. Heard about the look on his face, the fearless policeman standing helpless in horror. I've known Francis for 30 uh. years. The past 20 years, he's played loose with the law. And I know that at a certain point, every stolen dollar brings more misery than anything else. Probably sounds crazy, but I sympathize with the guy. What can I feel I bad for him, too. Your friends are your friends, and these are the waters we swim in. And the writing in this story is actually well, pretty good. People on that list today. Now they know you're in business. So you could get a call from any of them. You don't need to worry. Ooh, who do they call? I've cleared them all. And what kind of business are we talking here? It's oh. nothing too serious, just like you asked. Should be just a few small favors. Okay. Payments will vary depending on the situation and who you're dealing with. This How is where it gets interesting. Two hundred thousand. <laughs> oh, half a million. Why not a whole million? Because everybody wants to take a million. Figured I'd try something different. Why not two million? We could we could do that. Days? Well, you could earn it all above board if you netted all the big fish and hit all your bonuses. Never That's too hard. We're just gonna do it the hard well, way. You never got into my business, and I'm not trying to get into yours. But be careful about bringing in any other cops. Sooner or later, they'll put the finger on you. And and one more thing, Jack. I love the art I style as well. What you said, but I should probably add one more name to that list. Christopher Sand. Sand. So I'm thinking Kendrick is in with the Mafia. Pretty good. Christopher G. Sand. Everyone knows the name, but few could tell you who he is. The old man stays away from the spotlight. Always wears old-fashioned jeans and knitted sweaters. Gives to charity, rarely attends social events. An avid hunter, I hear. Even dabbles in poetry. You'd never guess he's the head of the If you dabble in poetry, you're a nerd. The city. Goes back as far as his you. grandfather. <laughs> and Sand is strict about following the old rules. He rarely involves himself in commonplace murders and robberies. Hardly needs to intimidate anyone to get his point across. So Sand the people just is the mafia, then. Their sphere. They provide protection where needed, even work with the authorities when they want to make a deal. So if I've been working Sand this long, why haven't I met him yet? Without getting his hands dirty. People sometimes mistake his quiet approach. A couple years ago, an arms dealer decided to expand its business. Oh, those people are hanging in the corner. And his whole family paid the price. Oh, in four oh, weeks, oh no. Sand killed 31 people. Old men, women, even a few teenagers. And Sand's people made sure every paper Golly. Was Frank, I don't want to hear you say that name again. Jack, please listen to me. I'm in with these guys. Oh, are you, Kendrick? That's not the kind of business I'm into. I don't go there. Never have, never will. Well, I'm controlling you, Jack, so you really don't have a choice. I'll go there. That's fine. It's not my first murder and probably won't be the last. Prince Kendrick announces retirement date. Legendary singer Gernardo Crespo comes to Freeburg. Hey, hey. And construction of cinema exam postponed once again. I think we're going to have to deal with that today, maybe. I seem to remember things like that would happen. It would be in the paper and then later, if it was like a big thing, you'd have to maybe run security for it or something. My boy Robbins. Alright, let's... uh. Let's go with the blue one. I like blue. <laughs> Bud Meets Bob by Bud Freeman. 
Yee yee. You know, I don't have my timer on at all. I should probably turn that on. Boom, 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 boom. Ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. Vandalism. St. John's Cathedral. Woohoo. Music is real loud in my ears. Okay. We received a frightened call from the local cathedral. This morning, the abbot... What's an abbot? Discovered that someone entered the old cemetery during the night. The old yard's tombstones are painted with satanic symbols, and some have been broken into pieces. It seems like there are even marks from a shovel, but the abbot would say no more. Okay. That's not good. Um, that, that's really not good. But it seems like more of an investigative thing, so I'm gonna go with uh, Roy, Roy and Birch Jr. No, Birch Jr. does not look like a whole lot younger than Birch does. TBH. Alright, wait, what's this? Labor market. Oh, I can buy more. Ooh. Chankit Pongdahana. Oh, I need to hire for shift B on that one. And then. Okay, it looks like I can, I can take. That is a bearded man. And then take one more detective. Um. I guess I'll take Cynthia Ames for shift B. A, I want to say. I don't remember which one has more detectives. Alright. Vandalism. How many vandalisms are we going to have? Businessman Harley Jones, looking out his window, saw two teenagers scratching offensive slogans on his new car. Sounds like we're going to have to catch those teenagers. So, Vandal, um, Birch, and Grant. They're, they're all pretty leveled, so I think, I think it'll be fine. I mean, they're just teenagers. Hit him, hit him with a car or something. That that generally stops people. You ain't. Suspicious individual Eddie's Burgers. A waitress named Mila reports that she just served a chicken Eddie and a Diet Coke to a dangerous criminal who she'd seen on television just this morning. The culprit is sitting at the window eating a burger. Okay, I don't think a criminal would be in the same town eating a burger. I'm not gonna send both because we probably still need Robins for something, so I'm gonna go ahead and send somebody. Because I, that doesn't make any sense. Vandalism. Here we go. Of course the offender escaped. Birch! I hate Birch so much. I haven't gotten a call from any of the Mafia people yet, but I'm excited for it. Hey, that's um, pretty close to today's day. Suspicious individual. The waitress had mistaken retired officer Frank Nero for fugitive in question. See, that's what I mean. Sometimes that sort of thing happens and you don't know whether it's a real thing or not. Oh yeah, see, Lewis Nightclub, here we go. Mr. Boy, my bouncer stuffed himself with Mexican food again and now he can't get off the can. Meantime, the line outside club is stretching around the block. We need someone outside who can tell the cool guys from the punks. I bet you Roy can do it. <laughs> Roy looks like he's about to drop dead if someone like farts in his general direction. Oh, but what if it's one of those ones that gives you a, a skill bump? What if it gives Roy like a, like a 10 point skill bump and then he's just useless but with slightly more skill? Drug sales. What's this? Christopher G. Sands, I Serena. Hey, I know that man. An anonymous call just came in. A clown carrying balloons at the skating rink is selling crack to teenagers. Is this one real or not? It sounds more real because I have bought crack from a clown before. Four Sam Sorkin. Uh, report. Sorry, Chief, but I quit. Thank you. Oh, I hate you, Roy, so much. In one night, I pulled in more cash than I earned in a month working at the stump. Mr. Sorkin said he wouldn't mind taking me on. I guess I just wasn't come out, coming out. Oh, sorry, cut out to be a cop. Well, he, Roy's gonna die in like seven days anyway. He looks pretty close, so I don't really care. Forty-five hundred dollars. Golly. Oh, suicide. That that's not good. Well, a naked man carrying a canister of gasoline has threatened to set himself on fire unless his favorite chewing gum becomes popular again. Once again, me IRL. All right, I'm gonna send somebody in Robbins because you don't want anyone to kill themselves. Let's see. We're going to have to hire someone for shift A. Let's do... I really want the bearded man, but she's way better. Ah, but I want the bearded man. 
Hire for shift A. His beard will save us all. Oh, there we go. We're locking up. Still got one more case thing working, though. As police arrive, a clown is making a balloon animal for the kids. Is it filled with crack? Um... Carefully watch the clown from the stands. I think we'll both, I don't want him to run away. Oh, we got him. Nice. Officers unharmed. Good. Good, good, good. Good. I, I, yeah, I still have one more call going out for the suicide threat. Defender caught. Officers unharmed. Great. Great, great. I love gum just as much as you, but don't set yourself on fire for it. Checkpoint. Enemies using feminists to destroy Freeburg. Robespierre to reveal his identity when the time is right. Oh, sorry, Robespierre. Feminist organization denied official registration. I'm pretty sure we're going to have to deal with that today. Oh, another cinematic. Whenever I look I'm great. At home and there's a knock at the door, I always hope it'll be my wife, Laura. She's always forgetting her keys. That's sweet. Hello, my name is Steve, and you're Jack Boyd, is that right? <laughs> To get to my front door, <laughs> the Bible boys walked about a mile from the local bus stop, jumping over mud puddles and skirting a couple of landfills. Laura doesn't go in for religion either, but according to her, these brave lunatics with their fake smiles... Yeah, I never understood being rude to those guys. I mean, they, 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 you know, they believe in what they do. ...asks them questions, regales them with pastries, and never once dropping a hint of condescension. When I watch her do it, I've got to admit it gets me. I'd have hugged those boys, sat with them on the porch, and lit up a cigar. But a month after Laura left, all I could do was quietly oh. ask them not to bother me. It's like, okay, I guess Laura is not with field. him anymore. Shut the door in his nose this time. Another couple weeks at this rate, and I'll be greeting anyone who comes close with my service pistol pointed towards the sky, ready to fire my warning shots. I had a breath for opening the life, door. Even the basic stuff never goes like it's supposed to. Normally, when a wife is going to leave home, she'll make a scene or at least sit everyone down for a serious conversation. But Laura just disappeared. The children in the stories always stand on the side of the mother, but all three of our sons supported me. Oh, so I have kids. That's the awesome. The in-laws always blame the husband for making their daughter unhappy. But now Sally, Laura's mother, well, we sort of have a pact. The fellow Laura ran off with is young enough to be her son. I hear he's 30 years old. Of all the possible information a man can know about his wife's lover, I get him with that. Like a 30-year-old ended up running off with like a 60-year-old. Like sounds either. Sally figures this guy just thought he'd have some fun with a mature woman, but he'll be back chasing college girls before the year is out. So we have an agreement. Sally's going to take her back. Down Laura and try to reason with her and we'll arrange a meeting. Meanwhile, I'm supposed to not do anything stupid, which of course means anything at all. It's a crazy situation. I'm the police chief, and the person I'm trusting to find my wife is an old woman armed with a phone book. But I can't afford to lose Sally as an ally. So for the moment, I had to swallow my pride. Hello. Mrs. Markham, this is Boyd. Oh, Sally looks oh, nice. She has a... That's what thing I that she's you. holding Have you found maybe an animal an address phone number have you spoken to her don't worry jack i've narrowed the range to two suspects or whatever you like to say at your police building she's a picture of her dog looks like i guess we find people faster than a funny old woman chirping on the phone with my wife's girlfriends oh, you're an old man jack come to your senses they give us straight odds on the street but i've got more energy jack Maybe you think I'm a foolish old woman, but I go to my book club, argue with the girls about Byron, and it gives me energy. I talk to my dogs, and it gives me energy. And you One doesn't give you energy. You don't even have a hobby. You got no passion. It's why Laura left you. Let's not my hobby is heroin. Sally, find my wife, and we can discuss my hobbies later. I'm waiting for your call. And my patient to be honest, I don't think she's your wife anymore, dude. Laura, if you've stopped loving me, I'll let you go. I can't expect the impossible from you. Just don't let me die out here, okay? Oh, 
All right, well, that was fun. I'm going to leave this episode here, and I'll see you all next time.